Looking good here. Vincent, how are you today? Doing great. Fantastic. We are live and rolling. Give it till the top of the hour here. I'll make a couple of quick announcements and then we'll we'll let you we'll let you take off and do your thing. Great, thanks. Got any awesome plans for the weekend? Um, golly, not that I know of yet. Is that coming up already? <laughs> Jeez. Right, I know. I know. Only Monday. It's it, you, you blink and it goes by, right? Yeah. Should no. I be on the Should I be on the webcam while I'm doing this, or no, no, no? You're fine. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I just didn't want to consume bandwidth. No, that's kind of where I. Number one, nobody wants to look at my mug, but number two, we want to definitely uh, save save the uh, bandwidth. Yeah. So we're doing good. Got some people rolling in here. All righty. <laughs> We are at the top of the hour, so we're going to go ahead and get rolling. First off, thanks for everybody who's joining new to us. Thanks for everybody who's joining us again. Um, this is Anders Hudson, and welcome to the VMware ARIA GMU, getting more out of. Uh, these are video blogs that are made for VMware ARIA users uh, to get more out of their product, learn some cool tips and tricks with some of our specialists and professionals, and uh, generally get some questions answered. So um, today we're going to be presenting, uh, we're going to be presenting VMware automation building blocks. And uh, we've got Vincent Riccio with us here today. So um, if you have any questions for Vincent, um, you can go ahead and ask, uh, ask the questions in the chat in whatever platform you're viewing on, and we can get those questions answered. Uh, in addition to Vincent presenting, we've got some helpers in our, in our chat to help answer your questions in line. Um, and we will also uh, have a digest of all of these up. So um, also uh, our recordings will be broadcast from, from these various platforms as well as uh, being available on, uh, on our uh, VMware Tech Zone pages. So, so if you miss it or you want to go back and revisit it, you can look back on whatever platform you're consuming from and, uh, and uh, be able to recap at your leisure. So um, in addition to that, let's see, we're going to be here every other Thursday, like clockwork at this time. So wherever you're viewing uh, around now, every other Thursday, we're going to have a new session. In fact, coming up on April 27th, the next Getting More Out Of series will be VMware ARIA Automations, Creating and Designing Cloud Templates. And our buddy Maher, who's uh, helping with chat today, will be presenting that one. So uh, keep an eye out for the links on those coming out uh, to your favorite channels. Um, those those will be coming out shortly as well. Uh, also, they're cur currently available on, uh, on the VMware Cloud Management blogs. So with that, enough enough about that. Let's get moving to the content here. Vincent, how are you? Doing well, thanks. Glad to be here. All right. Well, I'm I'm going to give this to you to take it away, man. Thanks awesome. for being here. Awesome. Great. You know, thanks for everyone for jumping on. Um, uh, really excited to be here with all of you today. Um, uh, I, I love these type of webinars like this where we can really just kind of, uh, you know, uh, showcase what we're doing and, and talk a little bit about some of the products that we have. So this is great. So um, today what I'm going to do in, in terms of uh, getting more out of series. So we in this getting more out of series, we're, we have to say multiple products that we're going to be talking about. But one of the products is, is uh, VMware Already Automation um, and uh, the services and things that go along with that. So we have a series of those in this getting more out of. Um, or some of like a few of them are around that topic and and so what we're doing is we're kind of walking through sort of a little bit of a journey in the sense of okay you know here's how you kind of get started with ARIA automation and, and the building blocks of automation and and what's our approach to automation uh things like that um and then going deeper like uh Inter just mentioned uh, the next session deep deeper diving into our cloud templates which we'll see a little bit here today um, and then also, uh, you know, doing things like building out the catalog and going into other more advanced topics later on down the road. So um, stay tuned uh, for those as we'll be, uh, you know, continuing this sort of uh, train of, 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 of uh, uh, enablements around uh, RA automation. Okay, so in this session, right, what are we going to go through? We're going to look at VMware RA automation, uh, automation, and then we're going to look at how do we set up the building blocks? You know, how do we 
get started? Um, how do we, you know, define our mappings and our, our environments that we want to deploy into? How do we define our, our networks? And when I say mappings, I'm sorry, like image mappings or like uh, network mappings and then our, our storage and our compute and, and uh, what clouds we want to deploy to. And, and then, um, of course, you know, uh, uh, building out, you know, things like tags and assigning users to the right projects and, and all this stuff. And you may not have understood every bit of terminology I just talked about, but hopefully through this, uh, session, uh, it'll become clear. And then configure placement rules, right? So when you were doing deployments from automation, we want to deploy stuff. Hey, how do we make sure that that, that stuff's going to go into the right location for us? Um, and then, then we, we're going to basically then learn how to create and configure uh, cloud zones, which are essentially kind of like groupings of, uh, well, basically they're, they're tied to like a particular cloud. So like an AWS instance or an Azure instance or an on-prem instance, uh, vSphere or something like that, right? Um, and then the cloud zones, um, uh, essentially, uh, uh, will let us, you know, incorporate compute from those environments, tag them, apply some policies and things like that. Um, and then those will be our target locations, uh, for deployments. Um, and so we want to make sure that those are configured properly. Um, and then ultimately create templates. We actually call these, uh, Vimer Aria, uh, cloud templates. And the templates are essentially, uh, YAML code, or you can do it sort of in a low code way as well. Um, and then we're going to ultimately release that to a self-service catalog. So, you know, really ultimately the idea... Um, is to get something into the self-service catalog, get some stuff in there so we can have you know, users in your organization start to uh, deploy uh, uh, resources um, and, and applications and services in a self-service manner with policies and stuff like that. And we will actually have a deeper dive um, into that um, in, a, in a later uh, session. Um, and then we'll just go over some concepts like tagging, version control, and things like that. Um, so at the end of the session, um, you should be able to understand the basic principles of automation, how we're approaching it, uh, curate services and applications into the catalog, and then create uh, declarative cloud templates for multi-cloud deployment. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, essentially look at a couple different types of cloud templates, potentially if we have time. Um, but for the most part, uh, we'll look at how we can uh, create those. Okay, and that's kind of beginning the journey, right? Beginning your automation journey in the sense of, uh, you know, understanding the principles, curating your services, and then creating your templates and ultimately getting things deployed. So before I jump into the demo, um, I promise not to have too much PowerPoint here, but um, I did want to uh, at least talk a little bit about our approach um, and uh, what we're doing with automation, um, you know, uh, in, in our current uh, strategies. So uh, part of it is, you know, self-service multi-cloud, which we'll talk about, right? Uh, basically creating the catalog. Users come in, they request applications and services in a multi-cloud way um, and so forth, right? And these could be, you know, scripts. They could be anything as a service. It could be um, a cloud formation template. It could be an orchestrator workflow. It could be um, a cloud template that we're going to build today. There's a number of different content sources, stuff like that. So this is really helpful in freeing up folks and making sure that that everyone has that, you know, people have access to the resources they need. But of course, we want to have multi-cloud cloud governance, right? So that's that second piece. Because as we build out these clouds, as we build out this automation, as we start to, uh, you know, uh, consume resources, right? We need to make sure that there's governance, you know, lease policies, uh, multi-level approval policies, uh, quota policies, right? Uh, things like that um, and and stuff and, and so forth and, and reclamation, right? Things like that that we can make sure that we have governance. And that's really on the policy side. We also may want to provide governance in the sense of um, also like, uh, you know, what we talked about a little bit before, like determining where things are going to get deployed, right? You might have some workloads that require, you know, some sort of compliance or may need to be on some sort of hardware for an SLA, right? Or some tier or something like that. So that type of governance also can be sort of created um, as you design um, um, uh, the, the automation environment or the, the, your automation objects. Um, so then there's DevOps for infrastructure, right? Uh, we will have a, a, a session a little bit on this as well down the road. We will also have another session, hopefully, on, on the multi-cloud governance as well, sort of our plan. Uh, but uh, the DevOps for infrastructure as well. So we'll, you know, we'll, um, as we go through some of these uh, enablement sessions, we'll kind of uh, dive a little bit into some of the errors of the DevOps for infrastructure. But this could be like your infrastructure pipelines, right? Deploying templates, deploying infrastructure, and then doing stuff with it afterwards um, in, in sort of a pipeline way, maybe doing some testing or, uh, you know, so forth. Um, and then also, uh, you know, being able to source control uh, your IC code and, and all that kind of fun stuff. So we'll get into that. And then Kubernetes automation, which has been 
you know, a fairly uh, uh, important uh, focus for us um, in, in the realm of automation and other products at VMware. Um, and, uh, and, and we'll most likely get into that too when we, when we expand out into the DevOps pieces later on. So I want to let you know the four areas there that we're kind of focused on and then kind of your journey, right? And this may not be everyone's uh, journey specifically, but right, you go from uh, maybe VMware clouds for a while, maybe you had your, uh, and you still have your VMware clouds, right? You're still monitoring, managing your VMware clouds, and now you're adding public clouds. So now you have sort of this multi-cloud journey uh, that you're going down. And so we need to automate stuff, right? We need to be able to consume VMware clouds and, and, and in the same way and in the same sort of fashion consume public clouds, right? And, and have one kind of consistent way of doing it and, uh, and so forth. And we say VMware Cloud, it's like, you know, VMware Cloud and AWS, things like that, uh, that give you that consistent look and feel of what you have on prem today. And what's nice about our VMware automation is that we can just dive right into consumer. So things like VMware Cloud and AWS are, 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 you know, right out of the box integration with it um, and, uh, and so forth. And that's the same for AWS, Azure, Google, and, and the public clouds as well. Right, there's native API integration into into all these environments. Uh, so, so essentially, we have that capability then to expand out the footprint, but still automate and keep things consistent. Because I can create a cloud template inside of our of VMware automation that can deploy to VMware Cloud and ABS, but it can also deploy to, let's say, Azure, depending upon what the user wants to do at request time. So, we'll look at that a little bit as well. Right, um, and uh, so, and then just a few things about our automation itself. Um, you know, just some of the, the services that are associated with it. So when you uh, have our VMR RD animation or you purchase it, you're going to have a number of services that are associated with it. Um, today, we're going to be mostly in assembler and consumption. Um, and then the other ones we'll, we'll most likely talk about in other sessions. But assembler is where we're going to spend probably most of our time today, in fact, probably 90% of our time, potentially in assembler. And what assembler is going to do is it allows us to uh, you know, build that eyes layer to orchestrate in our infrastructure delivery uh, with DevOps principles, meaning we can source control, we can use code, we can we can uh, use pipelines, things like that if we need to. But Assembler essentially is going to allow me to, you know, build out and configure the clouds I want to deploy to, and then ultimately create the cloud templates, um, and then do a lot of other things around, you know, what users can actually do in the environment, um, and uh, and also connect up to the cloud environments that we want to actually uh, deploy into, which are the cloud accounts. So we'll spend quite a bit of time in there. Consumption is where we're aggregating all the content. So we can aggregate content we create in Assembler, um, or we can aggregate content from like, let's say Orchestrator um, or uh, some other services too that we have inside there. But that's where we're gonna focus a little bit more on the, the consumption side today is, is actually bringing in something that we created from Assembler. Um, but this is ultimately gonna be your catalog. So this will be a catalog where you'll have a number of items in there that users can request. Um, and then uh, uh, there's policies and stuff that associate with that. So when they click on it, um, it could be, you know, policies could be associated with that uh, request based upon uh, maybe groups that users are part of or think, you know, depending upon what they're requesting, stuff like that. So we will look at that um, in a little bit uh, uh, deeper. Um, and then uh, pipelines are really just a uh, uh, part of our, our, our uh, uh, pipeline service, which uh, allows us to create a uh, uh, basically a CSD pipeline. So that integrates in with a lot of stuff and we can run scripts and chunk things up into tasks, right? And so forth. Um, and then Orchestrator, which has uh, been around uh, for a while, right? That's where we do our workflows. Um, and we will be seeing that throughout the courses of these uh, sessions. And then config, which is formerly salt stack. Um, so this is a uh, VMware config. And essentially, this is where you do configuration management and uh, you know orchestration and stuff like that with inside of an operating system um, and, uh, and, and so forth. So we will have some, uh, hopefully, some dedicated sessions on that as well. Okay, um, so yeah, let me just jump into Assembler real quick, even though I explained it. Um, you know, basically what we're going to do is we're going to go in and create templates um, and, and uh, declaratively. Uh, we, we will go up and set up our cloud zones, our policies, tags, projects. We'll get into projects a little bit too, which is sort of a container for all this stuff. Um, so that's kind of kind of where you point stuff to, um, and we'll we'll take a look at that. Um, import existing workloads. Um, as well. So when you when you actually go and you you add a cloud uh, environment uh, to VMware Automation, 
uh, we discover things inside that environment. So we will look at different types of objects. Different types of objects can have tags like discovered, onboarded, or deployed. Um, so if you deployed it through our uh, VMware automation, it will show a deployed status. If you onboard it, obviously it will onboard it. But if we just go and discover it, it will show discover. And there's a little bit of information you can get and, some, and a couple of day two actions and so forth you can take, but you can import those. Um, and we can also onboard them. We, we should have another session too where uh, I believe coming up where we will talk about onboarding a bit more, uh, but that would also be a uh, part. And we may actually look at it today a little bit if we have time, since I think it'd be a good thing to look at. Um, and then manage the workloads uh, with day two actions and then add um, extensibility through our automation orchestration where closing ABX actions. And we'll go through extensibility later as well, not in this session, but probably in a later one, but um, we can use orchestrator workflows or ABX actions. ABX is uh, action-based extensibility. It's basically function as a service across cloud that allows us to run like Python, Node.js, PowerShell uh, scripts, and, and those sort of things. Okay, and then the consumption piece um, is where we can consume those RE automation templates that we create. CloudFormation templates, images, you know, ABX actions. So those multi-cloud fast scripts that you created, um, you know, function as a service scripts that you created can be put in here as well. And then you can interact with APIs and stuff like that. So it's actually pretty, pretty cool, pretty powerful. Um, our automation pipelines can also be put in here as well. So you can actually have a CSD pipeline. So you can create sort of a developer portal in a sense and, and have these pipelines um, uh, in that uh, catalog as well for consumption. So enable that policy-based self-service um, with all of your uh, uh, policies and things like that. Okay, um, so I think that was the slides that I need to do for now. Let me uh, go ahead and sharing for a minute. I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the demo. So let me just make sure I didn't get kicked out in my demo environment. All right, I did not. Good, all right, so we'll go ahead and start presenting again. Okay, let me share the right screen. Okay, all right, so um, there we go. So now I'm in uh, VMware Automation. Uh, let me just expand that out so it's a little nicer um, and get rid of that. Okay, so essentially now I'm in uh, VMware Audio Automation. Um, I see the, the four services that come up. So we, we saw some of these in the, um, uh, in the uh, slide. Um, so there's assembler and then consumption and the config, which is again, this former salt stack uh, and then uh, pipelines um, as well. So let's just jump into assembler uh, real quick. Um, and um, um, do that, oh, I'm sorry, I think my screen, I've done something weird there, sorry about that. Um, there we go. I think I accidentally hit the wrong, but there we go. Okay, sorry about that. Um, okay, so I'm going to just jump in real quick, and let's go through uh, the configure section for, for the sake of time. So what I'll do is I'll go through just some of the things that we need to do in order to start building out uh, the templates and the, and the catalogs and all that stuff that we need in order to get um, uh, uh, our automation uh, built. Right. And so essentially what I want to do first is I'm going to add cloud accounts. So cloud accounts are added down here. I'm not going to go through that process because it's pretty straightforward. A cloud account essentially is where you add your AWS account, you add your Azure account, you add your GCP account, you add your, your vSphere account, right, but through a proxy. You add, um, you know, different cloud accounts that we, we may use, right? Um, and then what happens is uh, you they create cloud zones by default. So what, what happens is when you go and you create the cloud account, like let's say you created an AWS and you chose US, US West one, US East one as the two, um, you know, uh, regions that you want to, uh, or availability zones that you want to work with. So, or account region that you want to work with, sorry. Um, so essentially what it will do is then create two cloud zones, one for each region. Um, and then basically what you can do then is uh, uh, tell it, okay, go ahead and create those cloud zones for each region, or let me just go ahead and create the cloud zones and I'll pick the regions I want. Um, uh, so, so you can do things like that. Uh, but when you have the cloud zones in here, essentially what you're doing is it's kind of grouped uh, the compute and everything together uh, in one place. And then we're gonna basically uh, add tags and we'll talk a little bit about tags. I'm, I'm probably gonna talk about tags while we're in the cloud zone section. So we can kind of get that out of the way because we're gonna see it quite a bit. Um, and then um, and, and then so forth. So notice I have cloud zones for, you know, like uh, US West one and then my data centers and so forth. I'm gonna show you a data center um, 
example, because it's kind of cool because if you have RA automation, um, uh, uh, like integrated in with our operations tool or RA operations tool, then RA operations brings in some stuff from into automation. So it brings in like some uh, capacity planning, it brings in some metrics uh, and so forth. So we get some more operational pieces. So when I click on um, a particular uh, cloud zone, and we have that integrated in with operations manager. Again, this is an on-prem one, so we can integrate it in with it. Um, essentially, uh, or this this Cosmo is on-prem. Um, essentially, we get like some you know CPU memory and storage utilization. We get some capacity consumption, uh, so we can look at you know our demand versus capacity. Uh, so it just gives us a nice uh, view, real quick, of this particular. Uh, you know, sort of, the, I guess, the performance and sort of, you know, what, what are we doing from a consumption standpoint uh, with this particular uh, environment? Um, our summary is just the summary, but here's where we can put tags. We can put tags in a couple of different places. We can put them in the compute section, or we can just tag the entire cloud zone. So if we want this entire cloud zone to be um, uh, available for a particular tag, then we can do that. If we want to narrow it down, uh, and and specify what cluster we want to have a particular tag. We can do that. And this one, we maybe not. You know, we're just probably having some examples here. So what will happen with these tags is these are capability tags. So what we're saying is these are tags that can um, uh, say, look, these are capabilities, but then there's also like restrictions, right? So uh, like tags like this and the other tags would be constraint tags as well meaning that um, uh, the constraint tags, when we create our cloud templates or do other things in the system, we can use these constraint tags to focus in on that area. So if we only want, if, if someone chooses something that would enact or use cloud vSphere as the tag, let's say they chose an option like, you know, a tier one storage and that had the, you know, have this tag associated with it or something like that. Um, then essentially, uh, you know, that would be part of the placement decision making uh, that occurs. Okay, um, and so uh, that's what we'll get in. We'll see that a little bit more too when we get in the cloud template, and I'll show you a test how to test it, and I'll show you how it made the decisions uh, it made to determine what cloud zone to go to, because um, we can do that ultimately. But um, you know, for now, you're you're just going to want to tag things, and we do have some you know tagging strategies stuff in our documentation, and you know, getting a tagging strategy, especially when you're looking at multi-cloud and cloud agnostic type capabilities, becomes very important, especially if you have like a lot of different networks in here and a lot of different storage types. Tagging everything is how we're going to uh, really kind of fundamentally create a foundation for placement and so forth. Um, so good to kind of have that you know, defined um, and, uh, and, and uh, so forth. And there's actually a tag section over here uh, that allows you to go in and view all your tags and you can, you know, go say, okay, what, 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 what objects are ENV vSphere associated with, right? And, and then you can go in tags and say, okay, what are all the objects associated with that? Because if you are trying to do a deployment and you see that, you know, it seems to be hung up on not able to find something, you can go in and look and say, okay, what, what, what object has this tag, and then you might be able to troubleshoot it from there or something like that. Hopefully that made sense. Um, so, um, and then the projects, right? So I'm gonna, I'll, I'll get into projects here in just a second, but these cloud zones will be associated with a project. Um, and then once you've got your cloud zone kind of defined, like you've, you've added your compute, um, things like that. So you don't have to use all the compute that shows up. You can specifically assign certain compute tags or however you wanna do it. Um, but uh, once you've got that set up, then you can go in and start doing the um, abstraction of the cloud. Um, so it's when we talk about mappings and profiles for the most part, right? And then there may be a couple other things in the, in the product that also help with abstraction. But for the most part, this is where we start the abstraction process, um, which kind of sounds like we're pulling something out. But, but this is essentially where we start the process of saying, okay, you know, we, we may want to deploy across clouds from one cloud template. So we need to make sure that we, we bucket things in the right area so we can, when users choose something like a large flavor mapping, they have access to the to the cloud zones that we want them to. So for instance, a flavor mapping is, is essentially like a t-shirt size. So how big or, or you know, small, medium, large type of stuff, right? And these are labels we, we created, um, you can create your own. So if you go into a particular flavor mapping, what you're going to see is all the cloud accounts um, that we've added to the small flavor mapping, right? So if we add more accounts, we can do that. Uh, they all may be in here. Yeah, there's no uh, additional ones. So, um, so they're all in here, um, but we can add, you know, any particular cloud, uh, cloud zones that we want. Um, and then we can say the value. 
So if someone deploys something and it happens to go to US West 1, well, it's going to use a T3 small if they chose small as the flavor or if flavor was chosen, um, you know, hard coded into the code, right? Um, these would be the specs of the machines that get deployed. So we don't have to specify that or know what that's going to be. Um, all they need to know is they need a small, medium, large, or, you know, again, you can, uh, you know, customize these however you want or label them however you want. Um, uh, and, and also the other thing too I want to mention about all of this uh, is that you can do all of this through the API as well. So you can create your cloud zones, you can create your flavor mappings, you can create your image mappings, you can, uh, you know, create profiles, you can create cloud templates, you can ultimately provision them uh, all through the API as well. So I'm going to show everything from the UI today, uh, but just know we can do this programmatically um, as well. Um, and then your image mappings are going to be, uh, you know, obviously just images that you would use across the environment. So your images you're using inside of uh, AWS and Azure and so forth. Um, and then your network profiles and storage profiles get into, uh, you know, uh, there's a little bit more you may have to do here with those in terms of configuration. So your network profiles, again, will abstract networks and we will tag these networks. So we'll bring in uh, like, you know, NSX networks, we'll bring in, you know, your, your uh, uh, diff different uh, environments or different existing networks from different public cloud environments. Um, so if you go into like, let's say AWS main network, right? Um, and then you can see the networks um, that are associated uh, with that and you can add additional networks um, and so forth. So you can also tag these. So if you have multiple, like let's say networks associated with this uh, AWS main network, you can have multiple networks in here. You could tag them differently. So, you know, maybe this is prod, maybe you have another one called dev. Uh, maybe you have another one, you know, that's, you know, open ports, you know, open 22, another one's not. So you can, you can label these differently and then you can also add in security groups. So if there are security groups that you want to be a part of the workload when they get deployed, you can add those in here as well. So if there's uh, security groups that you want to be a part of it, you know, maybe obviously these would be where you might have the tag for the port group um, uh, for, or the, or I'm sorry, not the port group, but the open ports and stuff like that. So that way, you know, if, if, if they wanted to, uh, you know, have something with a certain configuration, we could tag it here and then uh, so forth, right? Um, also, when you tag uh, these objects inside of, uh, the public cloud network, uh, we should see the tags here uh, as well. Um, and then there's like some various network policies and load balancer type stuff. So if we have a load balancer we want to add in here for, for uh, some of the NSX stuff, uh, we can do that as well. Okay, so I think kind of get the idea of a network profile. We're just abstracting uh, the networks. Um, and then the storage profile is uh, similar in the sense that we're abstracting the storage. Uh, but what we're doing here is we are essentially going to... Uh, uh, you know, let me actually just click on a profile here. There are quite a few of them. Okay. So one thing that we do as well, so let's say you're using like, you know, uh, vCloud Foundation or you're using, uh, you know, vSAN basically, um, and, and, you know, part of your, your virtual infrastructure. Um, we can, we automatically bring in all the vSAN uh, default store or all the storage policies associated with vSAN. So all of your, I think it was SPBM, maybe storage policy based management stuff. Yeah, I think I got that right. Um, all those kind of storage policies, uh, we, we can consume them. So we'll see them in here. Uh, so any kind of default ones or any ones that we've created uh, will show up for you. So um, we bring those in uh, and then you can change the provisioning type and so forth. And then you can tag these storage policies as well. So when you tag the storage policy, um, essentially what's going to happen is obviously if they choose uh, EMV VMC, it will go to this, this particular policy. Um, you can have multiple policies in here as well. So if they need, you know, different uh, storage tiers or different, uh, you know, they need encryption policy, whatever, right, we can tag those appropriately. Um, and then they can consume the correct, uh, you know, or consume the correct policy as they deploy into the storage. Right? Okay, so from a mappings, profiles, and cloud zones perspective, I think that's kind of the main thing I wanted to um, uh, uh, look at. Um, uh, I just, okay, so is the screen clear? I just want to make sure that the screen is clear. I did not do the highest resolution. Uh, let me... Let me see if I can do that in a little higher resolution.
Okay, maybe not. Um, okay, yeah, I'll just keep going. Um, okay, so uh, basically, um, uh, then now we've got those mappings, those profiles, those cloud zones going. Uh, but now what we need to do is we need to sort of bucket all this stuff into one kind of grouping, if you will. So that way we can put it together in an organized fashion and be more prescriptive in how we, uh, you know, where we assign and, and who we assign things to. Um, and that's where projects come in. So, um, okay, great. Let's clear up the moment. Thank you. Um, okay, so this is basically where uh, the projects come in. So projects are where we are going to bucket uh, cloud zones, um, our ultimate our cloud templates that we're going to create, um, and then our endpoints, right, which are going to be our cloud zones. And then we can have some policies there. And then we have some, you know, different things that we can do inside the project, add users with certain rights um, and things like that. Um, and, and so this is very important without a project, you can't really create much more than we already did because uh, if you go in to try to design cloud templates or design pipelines or uh, create things in the service broker catalog, or I'm sorry, in the consumption catalog, um, then essentially, uh, you know, we will need a project for that. So, um, you know, creating the project is, uh, you know, either one of the first things you can do or you can do it after you do some of the configure stuff. Um, I just went ahead and did it afterwards so you understood what some of the things you're going to see inside the project is would be. So I'm going to pick on a team and motto here since that was the one that was used in the cloud zone before. And we get a little bit of overview. We can see, you know, how many uh, templates are associated with it, actions, things like that. And this is actually pretty helpful because if you need to go in and, like, let's say, delete this project, uh, you'll need to make sure that's not associated with anything. Um, and so this is pretty helpful to understand, hey, what templates are associated with this uh, particular project, get a quick glimpse, um, things like that. Um, here's where we can add users. So we'll just basically add our users. Uh, you can add you know, uh, project members, project administrators. Uh, we'll get into all the role-based stuff just yet, but essentially that's what you're going to do there. Um, and, uh, and that can influence what uh, objects folks see inside of the uh, in the in the consumption catalog, because um, if they're not part of a project, uh, then essentially uh, uh, you won't uh, see that. Nope. Yep. Looks like the user is not there. Um, so uh, essentially, in these zones here, um, uh, uh, we got the cloud zones that are associated with this project. So users that have access to the project um, will be able to. Uh, uh, let me find another project here. That one's not working too. Well. Let me go to Milad. Yeah. Um, so what'll happen here is you've got a number of cloud zones um, uh, uh, in, in your project, and these are the cloud zones that users that are part of this project will will have potential access to deploy to if the cloud template provides it. So let me let me repeat that. These are the potential cloud zones that users could access, providing that you have it part of the. The, the cloud template you're going to create. So essentially, these are op these are the options we have. Um, so when we uh, when we go in and create our cloud templates for deployments, then essentially we can say, okay, you know, these two will be available for the users from that deployment, right? And then maybe we have another cloud template that uses all of them, right? Um, and and it, they could potentially deploy to any one of these, and that's kind of the idea. All right. From here, we can limit instances, set priorities, because you know there's also uh, like you could actually just drag and drop something on a cloud template, not assign it to anything, and it will, it will provision it. Um, it will just go kind of through a priority list. And so if you said, hey, you know, if if they don't make it any decisions and everything's the same, if all request inputs are the same, if all uh, you know uh, conditions are the same, if they don't choose an environment, let's say perhaps it's just random, then you can set priorities. Um, uh, if you don't, I believe it just kind of round robins or it looks for the best one based on certain criteria um, and so forth, right? So that's just kind of an idea there, a little trick um, there as well. Um, and I won't get down to anything here too much. Uh, we did do some stuff new around custom naming, but we won't get into that here today um, and so forth. But there are some additional policies that we can uh, manipulate um, here in the, in the project as well. Um, here's where we have Kubernetes provisioning. So we can actually create Kubernetes zones. So Kubernetes zones are, I didn't actually go over those before, um, but they're similar to the uh, to the cloud zones in the sense that uh, these are essentially clusters that uh, we can then, you know, manage namespaces and stuff and, and, and create those. So um, just another thing, again, we'll have another little more, probably a little more focus on Kubernetes in a later session. Um, and then we can also get price. So if we have integration, 
into like, let's say, uh, RA operations or uh, uh, RA cloud health, um, then we can get pricing information for our deployments in here. Um, and uh, so this is actually pretty nice. We can look at what the entire project would cost us or is costing us month to date and on a month to month basis. Um, so this is one area where we can get the pricing um, and then we can also see pricing on our individual deployments when we click on them. Uh, then we can also get the pricing up front uh, when we do requests, as well as the ongoing cost um, of the deployments when we look in the deployment itself. So if I was to you know, click on this and look in it, um, then I would see the cost of the different objects um, as well. And we'll take a look at that um, here in a bit. Um, and then any integrations as well will show up here. Uh, yeah, we have a GitHub integration. So that's pretty common uh, to have a uh, GitHub integration inside of your project. And the reason why uh, a lot of times is because you may want to source control your cloud templates um, and then make changes to those inside of GitHub or GitLab. Um, and then it would sync down um, into RE automation. Uh, so um, essentially, that's a good way uh, to do it, right, um, in terms of that, so that we have that one source of truth. Uh, free cloud templates and you can have you know uh, collaboration and, and all that kind of stuff um, uh, a little bit easier okay um let me see if there was anything else here oh the other thing i did want to mention i won't jump into a demo for it, but there, essentially there's also things like secrets and, and, and custom names and custom roles and stuff like that. We're not going to dive deep into all those today, but um, secrets are pretty handy. What you can do is you can create secrets that can then be reused into your cloud templates. Um, so, you know, obviously your cloud templates may have, you know, sections where you might have secret key or you may have a password section that you need to pass in a script or as part of the YAML. Um, and what we could do is uh, just put uh, secrets in there as well. So you may actually see that in the design templates um, as I show some examples. Uh, so I want you to be aware of that. Uh, custom naming obviously is being able to custom name the objects that you deploy. We actually have quite a bit of uh, uh, flexibility in how we can do the custom names. Uh, so you can create some custom names based upon the, the, the cloud zones they wind up deploying to. Can, can modify the name a bit uh, and so forth. Um, and then custom roles allow you to really kind of dive deeper into what specific type of user or what users and what groups can do uh, what things inside of Assembler uh, or inside of the pipelines or inside of. Uh, so if you wanted someone to have like, let's say, partial admin rights, like maybe you want them to be able to go in and view the templates, um, but you don't want them to be able to uh, edit or create or, you know, or if you want them to be able to go in and just do some management, but not edit things and so forth, then you can uh, give folks custom roles to, to get a little more fine grained uh, accessibility there. Okay, so um, essentially, uh, from an assembler standpoint, um, uh, you know, there, there's essentially the, uh, the ability to, to abstract some stuff create your projects, do your custom roles and namings and stuff like that. Now, the other thing too that I mentioned earlier <clears throat> is that uh, when you uh, uh, bring on a cloud account, right? You, you, you bring in your AWS account or, or your, your VCR account, et cetera, then we bring in resources, right? And so you can go in and look at your objects over here. You can see your data stores and clusters. You can look at, uh, you know, your different storage policies that we bring in. Um, and then you can, you know, just sort of like click on some of these objects and then get more information about them. But we can see these uh, objects coming in, right? And we could tag them. We could do certain things with them here as well. Um, so I wanted to bring that up. Um, and then obviously there's a, the activity section uh, where we can look at events, audit log, and any requests that are coming in. Okay, so. Um, Next section, next part I want to go into is more of the designer. Um, let me just see if I can just go ahead and jump into there real quick. I think I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new one. So I'm just going to call this webinar template. And I'm going to assign it to a project. So remember earlier when I said projects were important, right? When you create a cloud template, um, you're going to want to assign it to a project. Now, notice I can allow the administrator to share this with any project in this organization or share only with this project. When you click allow an administrator to share with any project in this organization, when you release this to the uh, consumption catalog, then uh, it can be shared across multiple projects. So users across multiple projects could then consume the item uh, that you've released to the catalog. 
Uh, so for now, we'll just keep it um, uh, like that. And then we're presented with a couple of different things. We're presented on the left-hand side with a bunch of what we call resource types. Uh, so if you see that in some of the, the documentation and things like that, a resource type is essentially these objects on the left-hand side that we can drag and drop onto the canvas, and they span a number of different things. One is cloud agnostic capabilities that we talked about, and that's why that tagging strategy is important. Um, and then two allocation helpers, which is new. Um, I'll explain that here in just a second. Um, uh, and in our next session, we're going to deep dive into that a bit more, I believe. Um, not putting my hair on the hook or anything, but I think we will probably look at that a bit more. Um, and then uh, Kubernetes, uh, so we can drag and drop, you know, a cluster, uh, look at our vSphere stuff, NSX, and all the way down, right? So, and then we can even do custom ones as well. So let's say over here, you know, um, uh, you know, we can we can create a custom one based upon ABX or uh, orchestrator workflows. So then it's just as easy as dragging and dropping stuff onto the canvas. So what I can do is just drag this over here, and it will fill in the YAML for me. So essentially, the code is over here. Now I could copy and paste this code in here if I want to. I could just start typing, you know, and building out the code if I want to. What's nice is there is a little bit of, a, uh, you know, sort of a, a little bit of a helper here that drop comes up and allows us to uh, add additional properties and so forth. So I could just pick an image um, and then a flavor. And then right here, you know, essentially I could actually deploy this machine. Um, I could deploy it and it will go to some cloud zone inside the project, depending upon the priority or uh, sort of, you know, where we've been seeing deployments already. It may make a decision to put it somewhere. Right now, if I want to know where it might make that decision or why it's making that decision, I can do a couple of things. So this may look pretty basic, but this is all the information I really need just to get a basic machine deployed. Now, there's no networks or anything like that, uh, but it will take the flavor, right, that T3 small and that image of Ubuntu 18 and deploy it. Right. So if it's if it's an ABS, right, it would be a T3 small. If it was in vSphere, there was some other like one CPU or if it was in Azure, there was probably, you know, a, a small uh, option there. Um, and then what we can do is we can um, test it. Um, so what I can do is I can hit the test button on this and what the testing essentially does. And, and it's really nice to be able to do this. And I would recommend doing the test, obviously, before you deploy or release this into your consumption catalog. Um, in fact, I would recommend going a step further and doing the test um, before you release it to the consumption catalog. Um, do that, but then also you can also do deployments right from here. So before you re uh, release this to a catalog, you could go ahead and deploy it from here and make sure it works throughout the entire uh, life cycle of the deployment and everything's functional. But the one thing that I can do here when I do my test, um, now there's only one object here, Cloud Machine, so it's not like a ton of different tests here, but I can go to the provisioning diagram. And what the provisioning diagram does um, is it allows me to see uh, why it made the decision it made um, to put it into the cloud zone that it went to. So you can imagine that as you get your cloud templates more uh, you know, complex or as you build more cloud accounts, cloud zones in there, as you have more options as to where folks can deploy to, understanding uh, maybe why a deployment could fail going to a particular area or maybe uh, strategizing on, on how to create your cloud templates, this can be helpful, right? So when I requested the cloud machine, it went through and noticed that um, there was a project with some cloud zones in it, so that's good. So it noticed it had a place to go. Um, if you don't have a project, um, well, let's say uh, uh, you didn't have a, a, you're trying to go somewhere that's not in the project, like let's say you um, had a, a cloud zone available in there that's not in the project, it would fail here. Um, so just let you know that. But it wound up going to VMware Cloud and AWS. Um, and then it did not go to these other environments. Uh, so you can click these other environments and figure and see why it did not go uh, to that particular environment. Now, it did go to the VMware Cloud and AWS environment because it met all of the requisites um, that we had within the cloud template. So it had the flavor we chose. It had the image we chose. And um, uh, it also had uh, a, a cloud zone that was available. It did not go over into this WDC01, even though it was part of the project, because the image of Ubuntu 18 did not exist. Uh, so, um, so essentially, uh, that was the reason why it did not it did not choose that uh, particular uh, environment. So that's pretty nice. Um, you can go in there and just kind of get those requests, um, things like that. So let me go back over into my template. So the next thing I may want to do is I may want to add a network. Right, and so I'll add the network, and I can just drag and drop the network here, and then everything is there that I kind of need in order to just build the network. Now I could put, 
a constraint tag on this. And what this would do is it would constrain the network um, based upon a tag. So what will happen is it will show me the tags here. So I might say, OK, you know, let me just tag here. I don't know if that tag will go where I need to go, but that's the way that you can constrain it. Now, if I hit test, I can see if it's going to actually go to that network or not. If it fails, then it may tell me if it succeeds, then you know, I'll go in anyway and just check it out. But if it, if it comes back and says, yep, no place that exists, ex that exists. So let's go ahead here and find out uh, why. And it could be because that ENV vSphere network uh, was not part of the, uh, uh, the cloud zone. So I'll have to figure out why that happened. Yeah. So essentially, that particular network did not exist uh, for us there. So, um, so it did fail for me on that on the test. So I would not want to throw that into the, the consumption template. OK, so um, essentially then what I'll do is I'll take that constraint off, um, and uh, then I know that that constraint won't work. Um, and then what I can do at that point, now that I've tested it, I can version control it. Now, there's a couple of cool things that we can do with the version control is I can um, uh, create multiple versions of this. Um, and in fact, that's what I meant to do before. Let me actually do this the other way I wanted to do it. Um, is let's version this and do version 1, OK? Right now, version 1, I just have the cloud machine here, nothing else. If I drag and drop the network on here, now notice I'm dragging and dropping and then modifying some of the YAML. I could also do this in the properties um, if I want to as well. Um, but but I'm just going to, for the sake of time, just doing some stuff right here in, in the YAML code. Um, so we've added this. Now what I want to do is maybe I'll, I'll create another version of it. And then what I can do is now that version two and version one are created, I have some options um, in terms of what I can do with those, those uh, versions that I've created. Um, one, I can look at differences between the different versions. Um, so I can look at the diffs, essentially. I can also uh, revert back to another version. Uh, within this particular uh, UI here. Um, or uh, I can also use one of the versions and, and tell it to release it, that particular version to the consumption catalog. So if I go into version history, what I can see is my one, my, you know, that version one, version two. OK, uh, so I've got a couple options. One, I can look at the diffs and I can say, OK, current draft uh, versus one. Right, because there should be a difference there. So I could say, you know, oh, well, let me do that. Let me say difference between two and one. Let's do that. So here's two, and then here's one. So we can see that the main difference here is that the cloud network got put on to the second version, right? So I can see that diff. So that gives you kind of the, the ability to see it from a code perspective. We can also look at the diff visually um, and then see that, you know, something was added um, and so forth. Uh, the other thing that I can do is I can release. Uh, this to the catalog. So let's say that I wanted to release my version one to the catalog. So I'll just release version one. Um, and what that does is essentially now you can release it or unrelease it. I could actually release both of these if I want to. Um, and what will happen is when they go in, they click on webinar template, they're going to see both versions available. So if you wanted them to be able to have version one and version two, um, you can do that. You can have them you know, choose which one they want. Uh, so, and, and you can also in the form when they go to make the request, you can say, here's what's in version one and here's what's in version two and just sort of have that text out there as sort of a little bit of a helper um, and then so forth. So I've released those to the catalog. Um, and, uh, and so those are a couple things that you can do with it. Um, uh, you know, you can also download these um, and so forth um, and, 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 you know, uh, play, you know, manipulate it uh, locally as well. Um, and and so uh, and and again, we can do things like inputs and stuff like that. Um, I, I didn't want to dive too deep into it because we're going to get into that in the next session. But um, when I talk about placement decisions and when I talk about you know maybe like really utilizing tags, let's say as one example, um, you know inputs become important because that's a lot of times where users are going to change. Uh, potentially how the original, you know, how the deployment will, will look, or they'll modify it, right? They'll have some unique thing they need to do. Um, so when we get into the consumption piece, we'll be able to, to see that um, a little bit, a little bit easier. Okay, so I know we're uh, jumping up. I think I have till the top of the hour. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and jump into uh, consumption real quick, and this is going to be our catalog. Um, so when I jump in here, I think I'm going to try to focus 
a little bit on just one area. Yeah, let me just look for MOLED. Okay, yeah, let me just do that. Um, so, so essentially when we go into the catalog, I'm going to see everything that I'm entitled to. So remember in the project, we can add users to those projects, users or groups. And then we can see that each one of these items inside the catalog um, have a project, one or more projects associated with them. So only users that are in these projects will be able to see this, this uh, item inside of the consumption catalog. Um, and notice that um, in this one, I think these might all be, temp yeah, these are probably all gonna be cloud templates and that's fine for what we're gonna do. When I first go in here as well, I'll see my resource issues. This is fairly new. This came out last year, I believe. Um, Believe, um, to where I can see how many VMs I've personally deployed and, and how much I'm consuming. Um, and then I can also look at my deployments, which I'll, I'll show you here in just a second. Now, the one thing that I want to focus more on here is what is the user experience? So, you know, there's a couple different ways that, use, that this catalog can be presented. One, um, you can give access to users to the consumption catalog right from this product, and they can go into this, this catalog right here and deploy stuff. Right, so this is one option. Another option is we have like, let's say a ServiceNow plugin. Um, so there's a ServiceNow plugin that um, is free. It's on the ServiceNow store. Uh, so if you have uh, VMware Automation and you want to present this catalog in ServiceNow, um, we actually have a, a, a very uh, a mature uh, plugin that we've been uh, developing for years and years and years, had it for a long time. And um, uh, that does allow you to present this catalog in service now. So um, those are some type options. Some folks also will, will uh, you know, sort of build um, a front end um, as well if they want to do that um, and uh, just hit the API. Because again, these are uh, accessible through the, the API programmatically. Okay, well, great. Um, so let me go ahead and show you what the request looks like. So I'm, gonna, I'm not going to request the one that I just did because it will be kind of basic. Uh, so I'm going to show you one that uh, catalog item that had, probably has more options on it, um, and, and it'll be a little more interesting uh, to see. Um, so I'll go into the request, right? And so there's a couple things, there's a couple of different ways that this could be presented. And when I say that, I mean there's a couple, there's the out of the box request form, which is basically going to take the inputs that you have inside the cloud template or where the object is that you're presenting here, and those will be you know, like your drop downs and all that kind of stuff, or your, your labels here that you see. Uh, inputs that the user would need to do. Basically, this will mock sort of the test uh, that you do on your, on your uh, cloud templates. The other option is you can create custom forms right from here. So in the content and policy section, there's a section called custom forms, and you could take this, this item and you can customize it using a form that allows you to drag and drop stuff on that. It's like a little designer, and essentially, you can, you know, create conditional drop downs. You could say, you know, if someone chooses, uh, let's say, you know, uh, tier one on a radio button, then okay, they're only going to see target environments that meet that criteria. So you can have like conditional drop downs, or we call it dynamic. You can also have dynamic drop downs that can call orchestrator scripts um, and pull data into the form, uh, or 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 allow for conditional things. Um, you can do, you know, data, you know grids, um, all kinds of fun stuff. So you can really make it, you can put like helper buttons here that you see, um, as well as the you know, text at the top and so forth. And notice I've got a bunch of different, ver or, well, you can have a bunch of different versions in here if you want to, um, and so forth. So this is sort of the, uh, the, 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 another way to do it, like a custom request form. And then you can just go into the deployment name and just do, you know, webinar deployment. And this will be the deployment name. And then we could just put in, you know, password. I'll just put in my password. You know. Well, that, I'm not going to type my password because then I'm rolling my password. I'm just joking. It doesn't really matter. Um, so uh, <laughs> don't say your password out loud. I guess that's the, uh, the, 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 the lesson of the day. Okay, so uh, your system admin account, your cost center. So we have different cost centers we can choose from, right? Engineering operations. Who do I want to charge today? Let me charge operations. I'll charge those folks. Um, and then uh, my target environment. So this is where the cloud agnostic um, uh, capabilities come in. And, and from the catalog piece, what we see are these target environments. So remember the cloud template that I showed, you had all those, uh, well, did I show you this one? I think, no, I did not. I'm so sorry, I did not show you this one. Okay, I'll have to go back and show you this one so you know why. I showed you mine, but I didn't show you the other one. My apologies. Um, so, uh, so these are all of the different uh, cloud environments that I can, um, access 
right? And essentially it knows that if I click on this, if I click on like, let's say, well, let me pick like Cloud Foundation since we've been going there. If I click on that, then um, it will only use cloud zones, image mappings, you know, stuff like that that's tagged to that VCF cloud zone that that project is using, okay? And ultimately where that cloud template is calling. So um, that's just our target environment. Um, I can manipulate a couple of things here if I want to. Um, and then hit submit, okay? Um, and also, um, if you have the R operations or uh, integrations, um, you can calculate and get an upfront cost. Um, so we do have some cost transparency up front if they hit the calculate tab. Um, the other thing too that you can do is um, uh, 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 we can do the, 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 the calculate tab um, to, to see what the up, up front transparency will be. Um, but then going forward, uh, there's also some additional cost information we can get about uh, the environment um, in our deployment section. Okay, then I'll hit submit. And uh, then it's going to go out and just start submitting or, you know, working on my deployment. Um, so, uh, you know, while that's happening, let me just go in to one that's already uh, done. Let me see if I've got one in here. Uh, let me just go in the mode shopping card ABS. I'll just do that one. Okay. So, um, well, actually, you know what the one I was going to do. It's showing up. Okay, so well, I'll go into this one, then go into my other one here in just a second. Um, so essentially, when we go into the deployments, okay, um, we're going to see like a number of things. We're going to see our 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 uh, our, our servers here, um, and then uh, we're going to see what was deployed. So um, and then we'll be able to take our actions and stuff like that. So if I go into my front end server, I can take day two actions on here, right, uh, so forth. Uh, you know, resize the disk, power off, um, and things like that. I can also look at a history of everything here as well that we've done. Okay. Um, so I, I'm not going to jump too much into deployments. Um, essentially, we can do some things on them. We can take day two actions on them. We can look at, again, price information coming over, some price analysis if we have that uh, configured here, right? So we get that information coming over, like I talked about, um, as well as topology and then um, uh, being able to take those day two actions and things like that on the machines. Um, so, uh, yeah, so that's kind of the, um, the idea of it. So what we did was we went in and built out the, uh, um, uh, the cloud, we built out the, the mappings, we built out the profiles, we, uh, went in and, um, uh, uh, you know, went in and created a cloud template, a project, and then a cloud template. We dragged and dropped some items onto that, that canvas. Uh, then we were able to release something to a catalog and then go in and deploy something from a catalog um, and then uh, um, and then see the, the deployment of that. Um, so I know I'm, I'm probably up on my time. Um, and uh, uh, so I wanted to make sure that we had enough um, time for some Q&A or anything we needed to add at the end. I know that there were a few slides we want to wrap up with. So hopefully this was helpful. Um, it gave you some tips of what to do um, when you are... Uh, 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 building out your automation and, and taking that journey to, to, to ultimately get uh, stuff available for your organization to, to deploy and, and so forth. So um, I guess, uh, do you, Andrew, should I go through the rest of the slides or is that something that you needed to do? Um, I guess I could just go through the rest of them. Yeah, I'll just do that. Okay, let me go back to my slide deck. Okay, and uh, so what I'm going to do, what's going on here? There we go. Okay, so I'm going to just go over a few little uh, uh, house funny things here, or just you know what we're where we're at in the session. Let me go back down to my deck. Okay, let me go ahead and present again. Okay, so hopefully now you know how to set up and configure cloud environments for your deployments, create a cloud template, and add items to a self-service catalog. All right, so that was kind of the objectives of what we wanted to do in the end here. Um, the next section is going to be VMware ARIA Automations creating and designing cloud templates. I believe that's on the 27th. 
Um, in that session, we're going to be creating and designing cloud templates. You're going to dive deeper into the cloud template piece. So remember the cloud template that I showed where I dragged and dropped that one object on the canvas. We saw a little bit um, uh, of the of the code on the left hand on the right hand side. Uh, we're going to deep dive into that. So what all can we do there? What are some of the properties? How do we um, you know create those inputs and uh, other things that we need to you know use constraints? Um, uh, you know maybe. Uh, play around a little bit with, with different scripting languages in there, uh, implement version control, right, uh, in, in terms of Git and um, things like that. Uh, so we'll deep dive into how all that can work. We also have some great documentation around it, too, in terms of all the different things you can do in there and, and the VMware docs. Um, and so that'll be uh, the next session. So make sure you jump on that. That'll be pretty cool. Um, and then if you want to get more, um, you know, I guess uh, the, the links are in here, but there's um, some stuff out on TechZone. We have a number of um, overall ARIA um, enablement uh, videos and content out on TechZone, which is really great. Um, encourage everyone to go out there and look at the videos and blogs and everything we have. We're gonna uh, we're continuing to expand our content out there on TechZone, um, so so check that out. Uh, there's also an HOL uh, ministering ARIA automation, HOL 2201. Uh, so it's labs uh, that HOL that VMware.com, I believe, um, or just our HOL site. Um, and, uh, and and there's actually a number, a, a few uh, ARIA automation labs there. So there's this administering ARIA automation, and then there's also um, uh, some other ARIA automation labs too, uh, and so forth. Um, and then there's a YouTube channel uh, for VMware automation, and then we have a blog site for our management site um, as well. Okay, well, thank you. I really appreciate everyone hanging out with me for a little while and let me uh, present ARIA automation, VMware automation to everyone. I really appreciate it. Um, and uh, I guess I'll stop sharing for now and really appreciate everyone's time.